Hi, this is Lori Moylove, and I have a special guest on the Limitless podcast with me today. This is Michael Avril, and he, since 2011, you know, have been fostering artists and a community around songwriting and on a global scale. You've also literally walked, which I thought was crazy, 4,000 miles of Canada over an eight-year tour called I'd Rather Walk. But I thought it was crazy amazing. And you kind of your past experience has been in the exercise and wellness side of coaching. And now you help build communities around songwriting. And one of the cool uh, recent events that definitely inspired me was this teacup challenge. And I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more of your history and how like getting into songwriting and the challenge kind of stemmed for you. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's awesome. Awesome to be here. I think this is just such a cool, cool concept for a, for a discussion and a podcast and you're the perfect person to be running the ship. So happy to be aboard. Thanks. (laughs) Yeah. Well, so in terms of, I guess you're saying like, where, where did the, where did the creativity kind of start? Yeah. Well, for even just when I was a kid, I I guess I'm kind of revisiting this through pandemic. I actually didn't. I used recent years. I, I thought I was more of an extroverted kind of person or someone who like really thrived on being in groups and mm-hmm. being around people all the time. Mainly, I guess, just through choosing a path of music and performance, you're right? you're in it all the time, you know. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's kind of how you recharge or how you actually kind of stay stay afloat energy wise. Uh, I always remember as a kid being a lot more solitary and like Mm -hmm. really focused on things like whatever I was doing. And not that it was very important things. It was like Lego (laughs) (laughs) or Meccano or like drawing or just like looking at the bugs in our backyard. Like I'm one of those people that appreciates and likes spiders. Like I don't Mm -hmm. know. I love Lots of yeah, I'm like, I don't know <laughs> about yeah, these spiders. Most, most don't. <laughs> um, in some ways, that like it's it's kind of funny to say, but they're kind of like the closest thing that I had to a pet. <laughs> or the spider. A pet the backyard, spider. <laughs> or like the little one, little tiny jumpy ones that would be on the walls. Oh, like wow! Everyone else would freak out about them, but like, yeah, they're actually the most fun to play with and and uh, <laughs> like harmless. harmless. But yeah. they would like look at you and then they jump between your hands or your fingers. Wow. And I thought that was the coolest thing. So like I always got really, really focused into stuff, but particularly drawing, like mm-hmm. drawing and art, that kind of stuff was more of my realm for a long time where I got pretty strong. And this is largely through my mom's influence of being able to replicate pictures uh, or just mm-hmm. like seeing seeing a picture and being able to copy it and, and reproduce it and so on and so forth and like that's something she's done all her life in in wow. the ways of like window painting around christmas time oh that's you know, cool like that's kind of a fun annual thing and she had a really good skill with that but she was she is super savvy with fabric like she she was like a sewer in many different ways for anything from drapes to clothes to like home decor to blankets to like you name it like that she was just she's always been very crafty and now she's like a card maker and she does calligraphy and she watercolors and like does all these things um so like a fine art that kind of a stuff creatively really came from her and i think just some of her tendencies but also on my dad's side my dad was really creative he, he's more the musical side that's where that mm-hmm. comes from but like he was a songwriter and he mm-hmm. he had a real gift with lyrics in terms yeah. of being able to be very poignant and very concise and insightful and at the same time sometimes have like a little a little bit of poking fun at things or like mm-hmm. a, a little snarky kind of hilarious streak and or just a comical twist and and that was just kind of his character, but he he could really paint an experience very strongly in his songs, more so than he could actually verbally express. Hmm. And and so anyway, like both of them had their realms that feel like kind of got fused in me. Mm-hmm. And and so both of them 
always were just encouraging of throwing stuff my way that was creative and so like if I started showing interest in stuff they would just kind of like kind of feed that flame and yeah and oftentimes it I didn't bounce around between a lot of different things either like I kind of would glom on to something for a lot of years <laughs> or, or and just stick with it and so it's funny to notice like that's just always been there um yeah. I, so I like that... a fusion, like um, you kind of became this fusion because it's kind of both of your parents' influences that kind of got you into um, doing what you do. And and you're a songwriting coach and um, your previous career path was like fitness and, and coaching in that realm. And do you feel like that kind of correlated into like moving into with the songwriting coaching, like because you've coached others, you kind of have a better understanding of like when, you know, do 10 more reps um, or like write 10 more songs. Right. So I'm curious if there is some correlation to that. Yeah. Well, funny enough, like the other big thing that I was involved with was sports and like, mm -hmm. I got my first coaching job when I was 15. Wow. And and in an essence, I've never stopped being a coach of some kind for the last mm -hmm. almost 25 years. So wow. <laughs> it, it's been neat to see it in different forms of like mm -hmm. being an athlete and coaching athletes to like working with people in motivation and health and wellness through mm -hmm. being a personal trainer and that kind of a thing to then working with creatives and, and people who are doing artistic expression in the form of music mostly. Mm -hmm. um it's all the same you know like a mm -hmm. lot of it is uh really kind of what what drives you and what's the human kind of personal flavor in that but also that it needs to be in order to be successful or to kind of cause a good change it's got to be fun yeah. and got to be something enjoyable because when it's not i don't think it ever really promotes any kind of a of a great or lasting shift so so true and something that I found really interesting in one of your recent episodes, because you also have a podcast, so our listeners, be sure to dig into Michael Averill's podcast. The, it's called The Songs um, the songs You Love, correct? Or right am I saying it? Love. Right, Songs You Love. And um, on one of those recent episodes, you kind of talked about starting over, and you actually released a song on starting over. Um, can you kind of dig into that and the creative process of how you how that song came to form and also like just the idea of like as a creative starting over and and kind of having that fresh canvas if you're a painting or a poet blank page hmm. well it's kind of ironic I guess is like because the, the idea of you know this your limitless show yeah um that a lot of creativity, I think, and I've changed my wording on this. Like I used to think mm -hmm. a lot of creativity is driven from having limits mm -hmm. um, of like. Oh, yeah. Confinement. <laughs> well, and again, this is the, this is I started changing the way I talk about it, because mm -hmm. like having a limit feels like you're restricted and that's a yeah. negative thing, you know, like or that you're it, it's a focus on what you don't have mm -hmm. versus what you do. And so like I, I, I did a a podcast not too long ago, an episode on, on this of like, just to look at as a, as a structural opportunity, <laughs> <laughs> which sounds like a funny, fancy way of doing it. But again, it's just like looking more, it's like a structure isn't a limit. It's actually just a, a narrowing focus or like a guide. So mm -hmm. that's essentially, well, that ironically, that start over song came up two years ago. It was January 1st of 2020 for whatever reason, I mm -hmm. felt like putting a structure on myself of trying to write a song in the time it took me to make and drink a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, and th that's crazy. Amazing. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it, I've kind of kept going through phases of like, Hmm, I wonder how long I, I can write a song and you're know, like, how, how mm -hmm. quickly can I write a song? And it kind of kept going narrower and narrower and narrower. And I kept challenging <laughs> myself step by step by step. And, and I got down to a cup of tea or like, a, you know, 15 minutes or whatever. Um, but it just happened that that was at a time where I was like really going through a big mental transition of mm -hmm. switching, switching some kind of just different roles that I had had in the community and industry for a long time, but also like coming to the end of my walking tour and just mm -hmm. like the identity piece around what that meant and mm -hmm. um, that that was going to be ending is, is a, it just felt difficult. It felt like it was loaded and to be like, well, now what, you know, like, who am I now once this yeah. thing is done? Uh, and I, and I think I find stories fascinatingly creative too, and like how mm -hmm. how they interact in our lives. And I think that 
when you feel like you're coming to the end of the story, it's a bit intimidating mm -hmm. um, without structure. You know, it's like if you don't yeah. know, feeling like, okay, I'm not sure what's happening next. And it's fine to be there. And I think it's good to celebrate. But I think if you go too long, it can feel like a bit of a floaty void that you're just not sure what to grip on now and you don't really know who you are anymore. But yeah. um, I was feeling in that kind of a state. So like just implying that little structure of of the teacup thing mm -hmm. really made me just channel into what I was feeling and that song popped out and and I was really, really happy with it. And I sat on it for a couple of years just because it, for whatever reason, like I couldn't, it was the only song I've ever had this happen where I felt I couldn't really do it justice at the time in a recording. Mm. And like, I worked with somebody else on it who did a really cool job and like approached it in a really neat way, but it just didn't fit for like what it was all about for me. And it mm -hmm. took me two years of really sitting on it. And this next teacup challenge, the thing that officially did yeah. in January to actually make me finish that because I wanted to finish it for that day. Cause that's and amazing. That'd be the, yeah. So that would be the kickoff of doing this with other people. So that's cool. You kind of touch upon like for creatives setting deadlines um, yeah. and and touched on that with the teacup challenge. And can you kind of touch on that for creatives like in, you know, setting that structure? Like what 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 goes behind it? Is it just like you pick this date and that's the target or like how do you go about putting that structure in play? Like for a creative, you know, we can get stuck in our own little world and be like, you know, hold on to a song for even more than two years. So um, I guess what kind of advice and would you recommend to some of our listeners listening um, in kind of creating that structure? Yeah, I think there's two really key things that you can use right away that are really easy ones to look at are time and tools. Mm -hmm. And so like time, like you're saying, yeah, the duration, that's the big one. That's the big one of just having some reason, some, some zone that you have to finish something by, mm -hmm. um, like the teacup thing is a very short one. Sometimes it like for this song, I just did in January there, it was January 1st. I'm like, I just got to mm -hmm. get it done yeah. and released for that day. Cause this is meaningful. Like this, mm -hmm. this is going to signify like a lot of things anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, attaching meaning to the mm -hmm. time is a good thing too. I think mm -hmm. like something like that felt really special and significant for me. I think anytime you can be beyond set yourself something, if you can somehow link in somebody else, like mm -hmm. I'm, my friend's birthday is coming up on Thursday and I'm like, I, w I want to like give myself a deadline to finish mm -hmm. this so I can send it to them because I want them to feel good. You know, like that's cool. Uh, yeah. There's a third, there's an extra layer to that that makes it more motivating to, mm -hmm. to complete beyond just yourself so like the time is one the tools is the other thing of of really just starting from one and then building up but like literally if it's a song sometimes i'll do this to just be like okay what's what's the one tool i'm gonna focus on using and so sometimes i'll i'll just be like can i write <laughs> Can I write a song with just a shaker? You know, like Oh, I wanna is... hear this song right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sit and write a song with a shaker right now. Right now. I'm gonna sit and write a song with a shaker. It's going down right now. <laughs> <laughs> On the limitless podcast. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but you know, it's like if it, if it gets to a, a spot like that where it's you start laughing and it's fun yeah. and you just have that thing then it's worth it you know like that no, that's creativity I, I think you know like that's the essence of like it being being something that drives you in a, in a fun way so so yeah I think minimizing your your options initially is good mm -hmm. so if you just choose one tool I do that often actually I usually just start mm -hmm. with like what's the one thing and how far can I get with mm -hmm. that one thing sometimes I most of the time get a whole whole completed song out of that but wow the, ben the benefit of doing this and or a technique like if you're a guitarist or using music like use one chord mm. stretch it as far as you can you know like see yeah. how much you can do with one chord because um it, it, you'll hit a point you'll hit a threshold where you're not really sure what to do what else to do and i that place is a brilliant place. I think that's mm. like the amazing spot where you almost get mad <laughs> <You're> almost <laughs> like Ah, I wish I had another bloody chord to use right now. Like, why <laughs> can't I use another chord? But the if you approach it that way, usually at that time when you've done it enough, mm -hmm. you kind of start just intuitive having the ideas of what you want. Like mm -hmm. you, you're not just like, oh, I wish, 
I could just have any chord. You start to get to know exactly the chord you would want. And you're like, mm. please let me use the G. Because <laughs> um, I know this is just going to sound good. And I think mm -hmm. that's a different place to come and just to, to know what you, you want to add to it out of a place of like, this is going to make it better as, mm -hmm. opposed, as opposed to just throwing stuff in for the sake of there being a lot of stuff in it. Yeah. It's more intentional. So anyway, there's mm. something about like having fewer tools to build um, to just get even ideas e ideas going. And like, mm -hmm. it's kind of the continuum of simple to complex. Mm. If you start complex, you just don't really get traction on anything. But like, yeah. once you start with something, one little thing, there's, you then start feeling what you can add that makes sense. Wow. And something that resonated with me was you mentioned intent, your creative intent. And I guess, can you go into that process of like, you know, when you're starting a fresh slate, you know, how do you position yourself with that creative intent? Like, you know, okay, like maybe you're writing a song about joy, like, and, and starting, um, I guess, what is that process of creative intent? Yeah. Well, say if, say if joy was the topic, um, mm -hmm. A lot of times I'll either just like try to access something for me personally, like when mm -hmm. when's the most recent situation that I could I could draw from mm -hmm. or is there somebody that I could ask that question to that I'd actually mm -hmm. really like to know their answer. So a lot of times I reach out to people that I think I'm I think this person would have a really great response to this question because I know mm -hmm. this just happened in their life and or or not, you know, maybe it's someone I haven't talked to in a while and I'm just like who who doesn't get to like that ask be asked that kind of a question because we I don't think we reflect on that really looking yeah. at other than the obvious things that we think joy is attached to sometimes mm -hmm. they're not the most conventional answers that you hear it's like right <laughs> so and I find that interesting I find that really inspiring to hear a little different twists on on what you think maybe is the the response that is going to be coming Right. I I definitely gained that on the teacup challenge, which I definitely was a participant of too. And um, I was wondering if you can kind of touch on, you know, what the challenge was and how like how it stirred and stewed that creativity. For myself or for everybody? For, for yourself and everybody. Well, there's something kind of fun when you include other people. And I think that's mm -hmm. the other aspect of like what makes something with others linked in more motivating is now mm -hmm. you're on the hook. You know, <laughs> it's like you, you can't <laughs> you can't really ditch on other people, um, especially when you're organizing an event for other people. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, where the hell did I go? go? We thought we were doing this thing. Um, it puts more of a pressure on you to show up. Mm -hmm. it, it puts you in a space that you can't really let it you can't let people down on that because they're yeah. they're actually their progress is relying on you because you've stated that you're you're running the ship on this you know mm -hmm. so i do that a lot because i find it it helps me that that that's a a major way i've noticed for my creative or most things that i do like when i mm -hmm. can link myself strongly in groups like that then then i i end up doing a lot more yeah. so and for what i do too like if i'm i've always had a big value on kind of if I'm if I'm going to be somebody who's going to be trying to encourage and support and help other people learn uh, songwriting or just like how to more so how to express their stories and who mm -hmm. they are but songwriting happens to be the venue that I use mm -hmm. it's uh, I I never want to lose my activity in that and because mm. to me like that feels like that keeps me current that keeps my my voice still relevant in that and like mm -hmm. I'm actually oftentimes because of that actively really searching and trying to poke holes in things and like <laughs> be led by people's questions of what they're struggling with mm -hmm. on top of what I've experienced or what I've gone through to to keep that going because I yeah most of my career as an artist in the industry and other things that I've been doing have really been about that <laughs> that kind mm -hmm. of a, a strategy of when I started touring. I remember before I did the first tour, everybody I talked to is like, "Oh, like everybody loses a lot of money on the first tour. You're not you're gonna play for <laughs> a bunch of crazy places. Like it's gonna be miserable. You're gonna eat crappy food. You're gonna like lose everything. You know, like it's like then <laughs> this is 
everybody's response to like that first tour and i'm like Mm -hmm. really is it actually like that you know is Mm -hmm. people cramming into a car and going across whatever you know like there's all these stereotypical things and so anytime i hear something like that i'm always it it perks my curiosity and i think maybe Mm -hmm. that's a form of the creativity of being like how else could this be done Mm -hmm. and so yeah i just started doing a lot of other things at that time as a result like i recorded a really simple album for myself on my laptop just live Mm -hmm. off the floor not really knowing what i was doing but Mm -hmm. ended up then just burning that album on a on blank discs and sharpieing (laughs) them and like i sold thousands of those wow you know, like that ended up being my thing and um uh, but it had a big it had an idea behind it that mm-hmm. was a puzzle you could interact with like i got mm-hmm. really into this thing but anyway on travel yeah i just ended up taking the greyhound bus a lot of places and finding like it was mm-hmm. kind of neat because at certain times if you learned some funny things that they had in their system like if you like booked a ticket on a certain time and a certain day you could literally get like fares for a dollar wow <laughs> and I, I I got a bunch of those at one point. So literally, I was going across like provinces, like massive, massive long distances for a buck to to go and, and perform in these other cities and other areas of the country. And oftentimes I was staying at either families, families, places, extended family or friends from college or anybody really. I, people had liked my music and I got to know along the way and started playing like house concerts. That's and cool. as a result of that, often pretty much every single time, like I would, I would usually have a place to stay, um, mm-hmm. you know, and like it would be really fun just to like participate in that and like really see someone's lifestyle and and learn from them, you know, like what, mm-hmm. what do they like to cook or like what if they're working and I'm staying there and like I, I could then make them dinner or and do a, like a fun recipe from my side of things from my background. So there was kind of like this creative sharing of like just mm-hmm. life practice. Yeah. Um, but again, overall, it's like my first tour I actually did surprisingly well. Mm-hmm. And then I came back actually earning way more than I did was learning where I was living. Wow. Um, you know, and I was yeah. just like, why am I even staying here? Like, when it seems <laughs> like everywhere else I go that the reception for what I'm doing and the music and like people are buying a lot of my albums mm-hmm. and they're like, and this is actually as a cost, isn't really costing me anything because I mm-hmm. keep being able to stay with people and I keep actually being able to just like offset things. So I've, mm-hmm. I eventually just kind of gave up where I was living. <laughs> wow. And um, I had some other opportunities come up to travel with certain projects to go to like Nepal and China. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I came back from that, I, I'm like, I'm I'm not going back to living at a place. I'm just going to keep touring. Mm-hmm. So, But again, it was just like being having the creative thought to be like, how else can this be done? Mm-hmm. Do I have to like play these kinds of places? Do I have to travel this way mm-hmm. in Canada? I don't know if it's still going to carry on or not because of COVID. But for years they had with the train system, they've had a, an exchange program in a way where you can perform on the train and exchange for your ride across the wow. country and just be able to stay in a really nice cabin car kind of thing and have food provided and yeah like i that's all the travel cost of going across the country gone and you know wow. like not only that or you're you're meeting people you're having a really amazing experience with like what you see and like people are there from all over the world and the stories and sharing that happens is amazing and so yeah lots of people that i've met there have stayed friends or i've played in their Mm -hmm. homes or sometimes in other countries and uh you know i did that trip 11 times wow that that, that's that's amazing something that i gauge from you is kind of building a sense of community and creative community and i was Mm -hmm. wondering if you could kind of go into that um building this creative community together and accountability and how you go about doing that well, I'll, I'll quote. Do you ever read anything of Victor Wooten? No, but now I want to. <laughs> he's uh, he's based just out of Nashville. Uh, he's an incredible bass player, a musician. His whole family are just next level music people, <laughs> and that's to say the least. But like he uh, he's most known for his bass playing and like his work with Bella Fleck and the mm-hmm. Fleck Tones. Uh, but anyway he's an author and he's written a few books and like Mm -hmm. these books really capture him and his family's belief on 
on music in general and like it's mm. more of a spiritual kind of approach to mm. music and just like the different elements of music that don't often really get talked about um it's just a really really it's a like kind of written as a fictional story but mm -hmm. the principles of, of music and playing like that way are are something that really hit me hard when i decided i was going to do music full-time in mm -hmm. 2011. this is like the first thing that really entered my life was this book showed up in a bookstore that i just randomly walked into and there was mm -hmm. i didn't really know anything about them but i got this book and anyway all that to say there's a part in this book that talks about you know it's like if you there's these three levels of things it's like if you want to do something for yourself like that is to benefit yourself mm -hmm. um whether like people call it law of attraction or whatever those things are just your positive thinking or intentional thinking that mm -hmm. stuff starts to show up you know so mm -hmm. but if it's like if it's just for you then like the way that they put it in that book it's like all all of the forces or whatever that exist in you kind of like work to make that happen you know some whatever mm -hmm. happens happens or not but there's another layer of it. It's like if you if you seek to not improve just yourself, but to improve music, like mm -hmm. music as a being and an entity, mm -hmm. then it's like all the stuff in you, you know, revs up to to be driven that way. But so does the force of music. Mm -hmm. um, it just amplifies things on a bigger scale. And then like the third the third level of it is if you look to do with whatever you're doing to improve just the overall quality of life, mm -hmm. then not only do you have yourself in music but the forces of whatever works and the magic, whatever you believe in, in, in life, mm -hmm. then that that'll be there and that'll be that much more powerful. So just some stuff I've had happen in my life has, uh, especially thinking of that, of being like, okay, yeah, like I'm a singer songwriter and I have, I'm talking about these things, but could, could this, could I do something with this bigger that maybe would mm -hmm. be helpful towards all everybody involved with music or music itself. And like, could that then be a vehicle to actually help, people in their lives in some some kind of way mm -hmm. um some crazy stuff started happening for me after that you know and and i mm -hmm. so that's that's where you kind of talk about like the group accountability as i always kind of like yes have the things i want to do but mm -hmm. every single time i think about something that i want to do i'm trying to attach what does this do to keep like a good spirit of music alive and like mm -hmm. the kind of an essence of like really engaging with that as a in a playful way and a meaningful way that also involves other people, whether they're musicians or not, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's like, it's just, it's just kind of use, utilizing it all to see where you can make connections. And mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest, that's the thing. That's the main thing right there is just like, all of that stuff works to just strengthen connections. And I think that's mm -hmm. what we need more of all the time. That, Definitely. <laughs> that's a renewable resource right there that we <laughs> We, we all i i have made a point of like trying to like do my part in a constantly yeah and, and i can definitely tell that um with the amazing group of people you put together with your program you know writing the songs you love and you also do some um coaching and you have um sessions and stuff um my one question for you is with creativity i ask all my guests about What's this one word, if you had to coincide with creativity, what would your one word be? Hmm. That's such a tough one. I know. <laughs> hmm. I, I'm leaning more to curiosity, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I think curiosity is a big one for the sake of like, there's so much we don't know, you know, and I think that's yeah. the beauty of creativity is like the fun of it is is discovery. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the other one, you know, maybe yeah. that's the other <laughs> word um, is is that there's all, all there's always a way, I think, in, in the creative process to discover something new, which mm -hmm. means you've learned something or like yeah. you've had a new experience and all that kind of is its own little solar system of words. I think that exists mm -hmm. for you for creativity, but um yeah, I think that's when it's at its best for me is like if I can say I can tell you exactly in anything what what that moment was or what that series of moments was in something. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then I don't really remember it as much. But yeah. I I usually don't stop something or I, I try to like throw myself into a situation or a practice that mm -hmm. makes me do that. So mm -hmm. I have that experience so that it feels like I did it and it feels good. Yeah.
No, that that's totally true. I, I love um, your word curiosity because, you know, especially as creatives, we're curious, we're tinkering around um, in any art form or any platform where we're always kind of tinkering. Um, my one question is, our Limitless listeners Where can they connect with you if they're inspired by your story and maybe they need a songwriting coach or, you know, want to work with you? How can they connect? Because it's all about connection and curiosity here. (laughs) Yeah, um, there's a few different spots. I've kind of split my creativities into about three different channels now. But um, through the one I'm being most active with right now is the is the right songs you love dot com and the various social media stuff there like there's. Instagram and there's a Facebook group and that's one of the places where it's been really fun that's where I hosted the teacup challenge and where people can engage with each other and I I wanted it to be a very active engaging place for for people just to try and like almost it's it's kind of like being out for recess <laughs> in a way of just like that kind of a spirit of it's fun and 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 but also just like looking at how is the songwriting process meaningful for people and, and purposeful mm-hmm. Uh, There's also other people that aren't writers there, like there's authors and poets and variety of people that do sometimes contribute some stuff in there with challenges that I chuck out, which is fun. But yeah, that that group is really fun. You just have to find it and just like answer the questions to to come into the group. But yeah, the workshops and stuff that I do, I'll post up there from time to time, but they're up on the website and the podcast is on all the different places like it's on that website, but also apple and and everywhere you can hear things um but i'm excited actually recently to have launched like a newer alias it's not so much an alias but it's more to do from the production work that i'm doing mm-hmm. um <laughs> i'm a i'm an avid wearer of miss mix match socks yeah <laughs> um, i've been for over 20 years and like i have a, a hilarious sock shanty song about that topic <laughs> Um, anyway, that ended up becoming the name of like my production company is uh, Mix Match Socks Productions. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I've been launching that and doing a lot more producing of other artists in terms of their albums or, or stuff. Some of them are, yeah, just doing any kind of recording or session work and that kind of thing. So that site, um, what's the site for if they want to connect with um, on the production side again? Can you repeat that? Yeah, so it's Mix, M-I-X. Mm. Uh, it's all one word uh, mix matched m a t c h e d socks mm-hmm. like socks <laughs> <laughs> normal socks there's no x or z or anything <laughs> um and then productions.com okay cool well thank you so much michael for being on the podcast here at the limitless um, podcast i know a lot of our listeners will have gained so much whether that's you know being accountable um joining groups Um, also being curious, right? Keeping that creative curiosity and carrying it with intent with their creativity and all that. So thank you so much for being a part of um, the podcast. We so appreciate you. Thanks so much, Michael. Honor, thanks.